added value in convection permitting RCM simulations, for example, when you go from coarse resolution via medium to high resolution, precipitation intensity, um, uh, spatial patterns, timing, etc., changes. But together with this, we also see uh, an increase in land surface heterogeneity. For example, when we look here at topography, this is the Alpine Ridge with Switzerland in the center, Italy in the south. You go from uh, 48, 12, 3 kilometers. You see there is a change in the altitude, change in the distribution of valleys, and so forth. So the question in this current study um, that we were asking ourselves was, what is the impact of the spatial scales of the patterns of land use, soil moisture, and orography on convection permitting RCM simulations. So hypothesis basically is we have small scale land surface heterogeneities. These should be better captured in these high resolution model runs. And we know that improvements in these um, high resolution runs are largest when we have heterogeneous surface conditions. Surface conditions, we also heard that now extensively, they influence subsurface, surface atmosphere exchange, land atmosphere coupling, and eventually also uh, atmospheric processes, um, soil moisture precip feedbacks, and so forth. So our experiment design is rather straightforward. We keep the atmosphere at three kilometers, as you can see here, uh, but we coarsen the patterns of the land surface properties to 12 kilometers, uh, as depicted down here. That should change, for example, the composition of fluxes and so on. Uh, we used a wharf. Uh, driven by error interim, one-way double nest, 12-kilometer uh, run drives uh, three kilometers. The 12-kilometer run remains unchanged all the time, whilst in the three-kilometer run, we vary the subsurface fields. We have no LSM in this case, so no mosaic approach. That's uh, quite convenient for this uh, study. One dominant land use per grid box. And we use a setting that we have been using uh, for um, other longer uh, climate mode runs. So now, what have we actually changed? Um, Dominant land use, uh, we use here the MODIS IGBP. Left hand side, three kilometers, uh, 12 kilometers here. So we coarsen the original three kilometers to 12 kilometers. And what goes hand in hand with this is that percentages of most dominant land use types also change a little bit. We'll see uh, a bit of the effect later on. Um, then we have initial soil moisture. So soil moisture, we, we, we heard it just again, uh, is a key variable for land atmosphere interactions. And um, our initial soil moisture at the beginning of the experiment comes from a um, pre-existing long-term climate run that uh, Sebastian Knist did. We have published that in this climate dynamic special issue. Uh, and the important thing here is that in our three kilometer initial conditions, we have a, a slightly drier soil than in the 12 kilometer because we had different precip characteristics. But already important to mention here, no matter what you do in terms of land use or soil moisture, the impact depends very much also on the background wind field. If you have a large heterogeneity and patterns, as, long as, you, as soon as you have very strong winds, you have a lot of mixing in the boundary layer, and the effect may uh, even vanish. Right. So finally here, uh, orography that shows you again our model domain, Central Europe, Alpine Ridge over here, 3 kilometer, 12 kilometers, and you see here again the double nesting setup with a three-kilometer box and then the 12-kilometer uh, driving. Um, yeah, we had, we had to have the German rivers in here and so forth. So there are certain reasons to go for that model domain. Now, a little overview again on our final setup. So we have five different setups, same three-kilometer atmosphere all the time. And we vary three and 12-kilometer resolution land surface properties. So we have different combinations. Always color coded like this, land use, soil type, initial soil moisture, orography. Um, ah, yeah. I didn't mention soil type. We, we, we vary soil type also with the orography, because soil type with FAO is so coarse resolution, it wouldn't make sense to, to have that at 3 or 12 kilometers. Um, so here we have our reference run, all three kilometers, and then the different, different setups or scenarios. Uh, here, 12 kilometer, uh, 12 kilometer initial soil moisture, orography, and so forth. So again, important, it's a one-way double nest. So the 12 kilometer domain always stays the same. So we have the identical lateral boundary conditions for the three kilometers. And we look at summer 2003. We have strong land atmosphere coupling during that summer. We had convective precip in June and July, and then this famous heat wave of uh, August 2003. And it's a non-idealized study. I mean, that's, we always have to consider this. Looking at some uh, of the results, impacts at the surface, um, 
briefly how this is organized. Above here, you see again that table from before, color-coded, uh, the different uh, setups. This is the reference. For brevity, I show here the summer means of 2003. Uh, that's here, the reference run. And then you see the scenario or the individual setup minus the reference. So we look basically at the difference, at the, at the average um, difference plots. The number in the upper corner is just the uh, spatial average uh, of, these, of these fields. So now looking at the uh, land-atmosphere coupling related uh, latent insensible heat flux, um, you see here uh, 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 latent heat flux, uh, very nice heterogeneity. You see big cities here, mid-mountain ranges in Germany or France, where you have uh, forests, uh, very deep roots. So uh, all over the summer, uh, a lot of uh, latent heat flux. Pearl River Valley, interesting. We have uh, crops there. They don't, the roots are not so deep. So eventually, uh, at the beginning of the simulation, there's still strong evapotranspiration. Later, off, later on, it dies off because it's, there's just some drying. So what happens uh, within uh, summer 2003, there's a transition from an energy to a moisture-limited regime. As mentioned, the whole domain basically dried out. Um, interestingly, we have less sensible uh, down here and more latent heat flux when we have the coarse land use. And that's strongest for uh, simulations with a slightly wetter 12 kilometer initial soil. You see that here, here the higher latent heat flux. So that's why I mentioned this um, beforehand. Um, the differences we see here are not necessarily related to uh, energy budget. It's mainly really the partitioning of the fluxes at the surface. And then when we look at here, the setup number C, this is really the impact of the land use change. You see there's a, it's, it's quite noisy here. Um, there's a little bit of an increase uh, uh, up here. And it is partly related because there's a transition from 12 kilometer to 3 kilometer or 3 kilometer to 12 kilometer. So that's actually the effect that you have uh, when you change uh, the land use. No? You compare the reference. Here you have 3 kilometers. Everything else is the same. And here you have 12 kilometers. And you look at orography, you have 12 kilometer orography. You have three kilometer here. Everything else is the same. So there's very little difference. Um, looking now at incoming shortwave radiation and precipitation. So shortwave radiation is inversely related somehow to cloudiness, certainly, uh, and indirectly and nonlinearly coupled to land atmosphere feedbacks. Again, here we see in the uh, setups A and B uh, that we have um, higher, where we have higher evapotranspiration, we have wetter soils, we have more clouds, and we have eventually less shortwave downwelling down radiation in these two runs. Um, over the Alps, uh, we have less shortwave radiation, um, more convection and clouds at 12 kilometers. You see that here. This is uh, the 12 kilometer setup, and also here with the 12 kilometer orography. Now we go on to precipitation. Um, with precipitation, Again, we have here the coarse land use. And we see there is a slight uh, increase in precipitation. Again, we have this um, more moist initial conditions, uh, more evapotranspiration, and so forth. Um, however, and that's interesting, it clearly stands out. You have the Alps over here. Uh, you see up to 30% more precipitation in the setup where we have a 12 kilometer uh, orography, for example, here, as compared to the three kilometer orography. Everything else between these two guys uh, is the same. Now it gets, uh, I think, a bit more interesting also. Mm. Looking at the impacts on the atmosphere, we look at uh, CAPE and geopotential height on this plot. Uh, 850 hectopascal geopotential height. We um, have mostly convective summer precipitation, so we consider a CAPE a good uh, indicator for potentially strong uh, convective events. So um, we have more CAPE for coarse land use. Uh, as you can see up here, uh, the red colors an increase. Um, but what's more interesting even with a coarse orography, for example, we have less CAPE. For example, you'll compare uh, here, um, you compare A and B, or you compare uh, D and the reference. So here we have the coarse orography. You have a decrease uh, of, of or you have an increase of Cape here, but decrease of Cape here. But more interesting, even and that's that's now really uh, uh, um, uh, what 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 um, what we found uh, what was a, what was a, an insight for us is we have a, a different flow over and around the Alps. So we don't see that when we look at here the geopotential height 
uh, as an indicator for the flow pattern. We don't see anything here where we keep the orography the same, but we change, uh, for example, the land use and we change the initial conditions. But as soon as you change the, uh, the orography here in these two setups, you see that there is a, that there is a strong uh, uh, change in CAPE. So it's a decrease in CAPE, and there's a, also an, an, an increase in the, in the geopotential uh, height. And when you then look at the geopotential height average fields, we had during this summer, 2003, mainly northwesterly flow against the Alps. So what that usually causes, it causes a Föhn effect, so you have these cross barrier winds overflowing uh, this, this mountain barrier. So we think that we have here uh, potentially a, a weakened Lee cyclogenesis in this uh, A and D case, because the, the alpine ridge is simply lower when you have the coarse orography. It's always the same three kilometer uh, atmosphere that we're running. Um, so there's seemingly a weaker Föhn effect. We also see lower temperatures south of the Alps. That also goes into the same direction when we look at the A and D setup. And the land use effects, for example, when you look at uh, circulation, I have to go one back here, the land use effects are quite neg negligible. So it's really orography dominated here. Now, just uh, briefly looking at uh, land use induced um, um, temperature differences, they basically vanish above the, uh, the boundary layer. So we see, for example, here, uh, setup number C, we change land use. This is the uh, 850 hectopascal temperature difference. You see nearly no difference. A little bit lower temperatures over here, because again, uh, we had this wetter initial conditions and more, more uh, moisture flux into the atmosphere. Um, similar thing we see here with, uh, it's consistent when we look at specific humidity, 850 hectopascal, higher values again in these uh, setups where we have the uh, higher soil moisture initial conditions. Um, Again, looking now at, the, at, this, at this thing that orography seems to, seems to dominate this, we, we have here again our model domain looking just at the alpine subset. Uh, you see here in red the reference, so that's all three kilometers. And in blue, it's the run where we change only the orography to 12 kilometers. We have more uh, precip. Uh, we have a shifted a peak of precip. We're looking here at the, at the means, the 2003 summer means averaged over this whole box. And this would be, for example, the 12 kilometer only run. Everything is 12 kilometers, OK? Now looking at the precip fields, here this is 3 kilometer, this is 12 kilometer. We look at, again, summer means 10 UTC to 16 UTC, uh, the red box here. So we see here, besides this alteration of the flow pattern, a course of orography leads to more precipitation and clouds over the Alps. We see that here. Huh? It's more. And we think that this, this, there's, a, there's a facilitation of, of initiation and, uh, and, the, and the evolution of more organized, longer lasting uh, convective cells. So we also saw in the Cape that there's more Cape uh, over, the, over these uh, coarse resolution uh, mountain ranges. So that brings me to this, to this summary. Um, straight away, the differences caused by what we did here in this experiment um, are certainly smaller than the differences you see when you go from a true three kilometer to 12 kilometers. Yeah? It's, not, it's not overruling this. Um, but what we saw in the study, orography has the largest impact. Coarser resolved orography in this study alters large scale flow over and around extensive mountain ranges like the Alps. And smooth mountain ridges result, for example, in this potentially weaker uh, fern and in enhanced locally generated convective precip. Speaking earlier in the afternoon, I know there is other studies. And Andreas, I think you uh, at some point showed that you have, you have different results over the mountain ridge when you compare coarse resolution with high resolution. But it, the other studies look at different types of precipitation, winter versus summer. So also model parameterization plays a role here. Um, and then the effect of coarser resolved land use map is overall smaller and mainly related to changes in the overall percentages. So you really have to change the fraction. The little bit, the, 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 the small change in the pattern really didn't, it, at least in these runs, didn't lead to, to, to a big change. But it then depends certainly also on the LSM. But um, uh, small changes in soil moisture, uh, like we saw in initial conditions, that really has an effect. 
As an outlook, um, yeah, I'd, I'd really like to use our couple terraces MP also at convection permitting scales, but that's a little bit towards the soil moisture uh, discussion. But this, con this, this specific experiment here, we, we should do perturbed ensembles, different RCM configurations, longer simulations, and also um, uh, potentially enlarged domain. And just uh, one little outlook. So in this uh, convection permitting study, uh, uh, um, 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 uh, this WCRP study that Stefan uh, Sobolowski will talk about tomorrow, we also change uh, land surface conditions going from Modis to Corina, and we are currently looking at what, what the impacts of that is. And we also change soil texture from FAO to this um, uh, uh, harmonized wor world soil database. So we, this is kind of a bit of a follow-up of what I've just shown. So thanks very much.